question of the week. Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly roundup of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's Constantine here and here is Becky. Number 39. Hot off the press, the Nikon Z18-140 DX lens has been announced. Specs will be on your screen here because we don't know them right now. <laughs> and uh, just bash the punch the microphone. <laughs> News flash. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Here we go. We're going to talk about it next week. We will in more detail. Absolutely. Well, we uh, recorded the podcast last week and then the very next day we gave it away. Exactly. No. It's always nice to be out of date. Yeah the moment you recorded the podcast <laughs> but you know what the funny thing is the discussion we had last week actually stands because it's um, true yeah, because lots of what we mentioned actually was a part of that teaser as well yeah very much so so if you've been living under a rock for the past week the z9 teaser trailer did come out the first of four apparently yeah um now we uh, have watched the teaser trailer we have analyzed it and we're going to talk about what we think exactly what we think go watch richie and matt irvin yeah and they tell you everything you need to know but we're still going to repeat that <laughs> well at least some of it some of the more sort of key points that have maybe been missed i mean the first thing that we saw was the very obvious tilt of the screen that's nice so obviously it's in the portrait mode but imagine if you're photographing a person from the angle so you can point the camera up pull the screen out and then you can still see the person i mean it seems to be that it tilts in multiple angles yeah right? so you got one goes like up it goes down and it also goes sideways so Snazzy. not a flippy like a zfc thanks god mm. but also what i've noticed is that when you rotate the camera to the portrait mode yeah a couple of things the obviously the menus go into the portrait mode so all those shots spin and aperture dials but also one thing i couldn't that's, quite understand that's a feature from the d5000 series i mean that's been yeah. around for a Was while it there yeah and we, we we didn't know i did yeah and i'm a snob i don't use d5000 cameras. <laughs> anyway so they had it so they had they had the gyroscope is that what you're yeah, saying yeah yeah the menus would flip in fact i think it goes back down to the d3000 series on okay something. okay i'm with you but it wasn't in a live view mode. And because mirrorless cameras is effectively a live view mode full on, yeah. 24 seven, yeah. un unless it's switched off, um, then it rotates with you. Yes. But you know, another thing I've noticed is the autofocus. Some people mention that it may have a dual autofocus. Now I couldn't quite grasp it. You mean a processor? Well, no, they actually eye autofocus, dual eye autofocus. Right. So if you, if you, a person has two eyes, mm -hmm. so, um, Kind of a normal occurrence nowadays usually so usually you, you would find the person with two eyes i mean i've seen uh total recall when they had the people with three eyes in there but with two eyes it looked like that you had two little squares on eyes as well but i could be wrong on this one because if you look at the model on the shot she actually had two white dots on her eyelids so i'm a bit confused on that so i will wait for the second teaser to tell us i'll be honest i thought that the two white dots on her eyelids were just fashion i mean i thought that was just part of the styling of the shoot that they were doing is that what they call fashion nowadays yeah okay. and i and i didn't think that it had anything to do with the autofocus but i did see comments pertaining to that and wondered mm -hmm what people were talking about really. no it's true i think you're right i think you're right it was just confusion but it does look a little bit especially it's literally the half a second before z9 logo shows up right at the end you were watching it millisecond no literally i was trying i was like boop, boop, you know <laughs> going like every fraction of a second and it's still confusing to me but um those are kind of the most important one uh, now we also obviously saw the controls at the back of the camera mm -hmm. so those weren't officially released before we saw them uh, very blurred at the shots from Olympics. Yes. Uh, but now we have actually a proper view of the camera. What are we doing? <laughs> All right. So we're going to look at the teaser here on the Grace Always Means to Video, obviously. So, because yeah. views. Oh, okay. So you thought that the white dots were IAF, but I can clearly see that they're just fashion. Nah, nah. Fashion. Well, that's that's fine. Then that's not the one. You see this? You see that bit? Yes. The, you see that last they're bit like, here? Whoop, 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 and then swoop, whoop, whoop. But wait, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, wait, wait. Uh, Look, okay, so looking at the controls on the back, and I hope you're going to screen grab this and shove this yes, in. Yes, definitely. Okay, so looking at the screens on the back, we've got our display live view sort of toggle between mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stills and video. We've got our dedicated AF on button. That's we've good. got our multi selector toggle. That's right. So we have several actually. We've got one at the top and one at the bottom, the one that's just if you hold the camera in the grip. That's very D6 style. It is very D6, absolutely. But then they moved the buttons from the left hand side of the screen to the right hand side of the screen. So we now have zoom in and zoom 
mount buttons similar to Z6 and Z9 cameras. Yes, Z7. Exactly. Yeah, and then at the top we've got, I'm assuming that's playback, but I can't see it. It says function two, so it's a bit confusing. And the uh, rubbish bin. And the rubbish bin. You can't do without the rubbish bin, can you? You need the rubbish bin. Absolutely. Always. But look, look at the eyepiece. Yeah. I don't think it's a DK17 eyepiece. No, it's another blimmin' eyepiece. That's really annoying. That's right. <laughs> That's and another I think, thing for us to stock. <laughs> absolutely. And then it's it's an eyepiece very similar to T500 and D6, where it comes off. It's a round bit, but it comes off with the whole thing. So we're up to DK29. So you think it's going to be a DK30? That's right. Mm. Nice and round number. Yes, it looks like it is an entire piece that then you would be able to unscrew the main eyepiece from potentially for the fitting of a rubber eye cup. Mm -hmm. You can also clearly see, obviously, it's got the built-in diopter there, things that we're familiar with. Yeah, the, the, it should be a little, uh, little switch to uh, full-on exposures where you can close the eyepiece on the left-hand side. So, yeah, it's, it looks very similar to DSLRs. And looking, actually, at the size of the camera in his hands, and he looks like he's got reasonably normal hands, unless he's Donald Trump. And um, by looking at the camera, it looks like it's a decently sized camera. Yeah, I'm just trying to like mock it up in yeah. my hands. It looks like it's going to be a bit, a tiny bit smaller than the D6. Mm -hmm. The question is, how much is it going to weigh? Well, if they shaved off about 20%, do you reckon they're going to shave off about 20% in weight? That uh, would be great. I wanted to see what the grip looked like. Okay. Oh, it looks quite like quite a deep grip. It's very yeah. hard to see, but it does look like quite a deep grip. I feel like it's going to be quite comfortable mm. to hold. I think it's a good looking camera. And then you were speculating about the top bump being GPS. I think it's going to be GPS because obviously in the specs, which we're going to cover a little bit later. So they said it's going to have everything. GPS, GLONASS, all those things. Cool. You know, seven up and everything. So, but, uh, um, so that that could be very similar design to D6 as well, where you have area where the prism is, which obviously we don't have prism anymore, so it's got the LCD, but at the front, it's all metal, but at the front, you would have this bit of plastic, which is not covered by metal, mm. and that's where the GPS is going to be, so then the signal can go through freely. To the aliens. Exactly. Connect okay. to the space, to the mothership. Awesome. Um, okay, I like that speculation. I think that's great. So apart from our prattling on about the teaser trailer you can go and watch it for yourself on our previous podcast uh, as well as on the Nikon Europe channel you can also uh, listen to Rishi's breakdown of the first teaser and uh, Matt Irwin's talk absolutely so Rishi was the first and I wonder has he got one already I don't know if he's got one but I'm sure that he's seen it because you know, even Arthur, who was originally working for Nikon Pro Services, he's trying to get Rishi to call yeah. you. Call me. You know my number. <laughs> my line is always open. Just for you. Um, but even, you know, Nikon Pro Services guys were saying it's an amazing camera. I've managed to have a chance to look at it. So Nikon staff have seen it. Well, we, we, actually ha we actually have people talking to us. And they say, well, I can't say anything because I'm NDA and I'm not saying anything but. And then they say things. Yes. And um we just say, well, I'm not saying anything and I'm not hearing anything, but thank you very much for <laughs> sharing your feedback with us. I'm not saying anything because I don't know anything. You're not saying anything because you know things that you can't say. <laughs> exactly. According to the Internet Detectives. Yes. And in this case. It's Broxy Bear at Nick and Rumor's website. Broxy Bear. The Nikon Z9 teaser was shot at the Kanagawa Institute of Technology. It looks beautiful. Mm. Have a look at the picture of it. Have a look at the video in the link in the description below. It is a beautiful space. I think next time I'm in the area, I will come there. You know, I've been to Kanazawa. Mm. I haven't been to Kanagawa. No. Ah. But it's only a letter difference, so it must be close. <laughs> I'm very good at geography. Automatically. Absolutely. Well, I'll Google map it and just to get the directions. It's probably about 100 hours walk or something. Then like you this. can recreate the Z9 teaser. Exactly. I'll jump on my Shinkansen. Yes. And I'll be there in 10 minutes. Shinkansen. I'd like to go on that. Yeah. You know, from Osaka to Kyoto. Osaka. In Osaka or Osaka to Kyoto by Shinkansen is only 10 minutes. Wow. That's incredible. So it's you can stay funny. in Osaka. Then you can hang out there because obviously you know, nightlife and culture, mm -hmm. you know, obviously nightlife and then culture. <laughs> Two separate so, things. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we have our priorities here. But then you jump in, you're 10 minutes in, you're in Kyoto and you do all your sightseeing and all your beautiful traditional food. How cool. Um, so we need to uh, make a plan for a trip to Japan 2023, absolutely. I think. We can do a live stream, a walk. Yeah, we know, could do Tokyo. like a whole live trip. From Nikon Museum in Tokyo, how about that? I would love to do that. Yeah, I've never been there. Well, no, you know, me I don't think it's existed last time I went. So. No, and I've never been full stop. So 
Anyway, travel plans. Um, Absolutely. So as we said, this is one of four teasers. So we're expecting that we might get another teaser this week and one every subsequent week in the lead up to the release. I think it makes sense, isn't it? Because if you release every two weeks, then we're going to be sitting here till Christmas for announcement. So if you've got four teasers, we need to have it every week, probably on Tuesdays. And we're recording now on Mondays. Yes. And then... Potentially, after fourth teaser, we'll have an announcement with the release date. Now, if you have an announcement, so if you had four weeks, yeah, so that means the last teaser will be sometime early in November. Mm -hmm. So then you do the announcement. Where do you do release then? It's going to be January. Yeah. This is my feeling. I'm I'm not willing to put money on it because I don't have money to just randomly mm -hmm. bet on something no. like that. <laughs> but, um, no money to bet. You don't have gambling addiction? No, I don't. No, but I would say... Uh, my prediction is end of January. Okay. My bet is actually the release probably early December. Obviously, we won't see them, so they will be released technically in the quantity of one. Um, <laughs> but then the main shipments will come in January, I think. But obviously, I could be wrong on this one. I think I'm just pessimistic. Well, I think it, you have a very healthy amount of skepticism. <laughs> Thank and you. And it's good to have with all the hype around uh, it's always good to keep your hype on a normal level. Just don't go through the roof because obviously we want to see the camera first and then we want to judge how good it is because a lot of people say that it is the best camera in the world. Mm -hmm. And I hope, I, I hope it is. Yes, I do too. Now, we have some dealers already putting the camera up for pre-order for, I think, like one was put as $11,000, another one put $100,000. For some people in Europe, they used uh, 20,000 euros as well. Obviously, those are place uh, holders, and I don't think they're available for pre-order yet. Not with us, but of course, as soon as the camera is announced and we have the price, we will have the listing go live, and then everyone can pre-order one, hopefully. All right, Nick and Rumors thinks that the announcement date could be the 13th of October, which means in the next couple of days, um no no it's not gonna happen something else might happen but not that exactly tom hogan had a wild rumor from poland oh, so yeah. obviously you know the, the poland they just got in touch the, the poles are known for their wild rumors exactly uh, so so they've said that the 24 megapixel z9 and the 102 megapixel z9 x are due for release okay i think it's a really wild speculation i don't think it's true because it just doesn't line up with any other information we're getting no i can see the logic behind it because we had obviously d3s d3x yeah at the time so we have a low res camera we had the high res camera etc but i don't think it's going to be the case no. so i think some polls had just too much the brofka and just wrote to tom hogan in the middle of the night <laughs> and they were like yeah you know what i got a great idea exactly <laughs> exactly fantastic so in terms of specifications. Yes. So what do we have up to date? So, so far. So far, the, what is this, where is this information from? From the internet. Okay. From the rumors and just charters for, uh, with my uncle who works at Nikon. Everyone in the industry. He doesn't really have an uncle that works at Nikon, just because I have been asked, like, can't Nikon's uncle do I don't, some... but I do. <laughs> So we're sort of fairly certain now that it's a 45 megapixel stacked sensor. Yeah. So 45 megapixels. Yeah. What it allows us to do is actually to get 8K. Mm. And for video work, that's important. So uh, the room specification for 8K is actually 30 frames per second. Now, we also have a listing that says it's going to be 4K 120 frames per second. Now... Technically, it is possible. There is a talk of 120 frames per second and 160 frames per second in some areas. Mm. But the question is if we will be in 4K or 1080p. Yeah, okay. Apparently, it will be capable of 120 frames per second in stills in a lower res file size. I see. So that te technically tells me that effectively it's a video mode, but that separates in, in separate JPEGs, isn't it? Yeah. So, so it's probably... Uh, more or less the same thing, but you never know. But obviously to allow for this amount of data, there will be a new XP image processing engine specifically designed for 8K in mind and autofocus speed by really, really fast readout from the sensor. Yes. Now we're also hearing stunning AF tracking better than the D6. Yes. I'm assuming that that's feedback that's come from the Olympics photographers or perhaps any of the Nikon Pro services guys that have used the camera um, because only they would be able to know whether it was stunning autofocus. And that's not 
usually the kind of stuff that Nikon release in their press releases. That's true. And then Tom Hogan confirmed that as well. And we discussed this last week as well. So uh, yeah. I tend to trust on what he says because I think he's got a bit of inside information. I think so too. And that ties in quite well with our improved 3D tracking uh, and advanced real-time tracking, potentially something that might trickle down to the Z6 II and Z7 II cameras via firmware later. Now, it's interesting that the next spec is ISO 64 to 25,600 with a high one and high two, okay. because my unofficial sources yeah. say 51,000. Is it your aunt from Nikon? My or auntie from or Nikon. Cousin? <laughs> um, but... Improved noise levels are definitely going to be a key thing there. It's possible that because it's 45 megapixels, they don't want to make it 51,000 or 52,000. Mm -hmm. But if you think the D850 is 45 megapixels, That's true. that manages 51,000 natively. And it actually performs very, very well in low light for a camera of that resolution. I think we can only see a, an improvement in a Z9. So you're better 64 to 52,000 native and then high one, high two on top of that. That's my thought. I personally like 64 because the 850 has ISO 64 yeah. and I like to shoot on the lowest ISO possible for portrait type of work or studio type of work. So for me, this is a winner for sure. Now, the next one up is high resolution blackout free EVF, which is wow. a true viewfinder, probably 5.76 megapixels or maybe even 9K megapixel viewfinder at 120, fr uh, 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, this is an interesting one, obviously, because of its price, mm. I personally think it's going to be definitely the top quality EVF, whichever, whichever is available to them mm -hmm. and there is a talk that potentially you can reduce the resolution of the viewfinder to increase the refresh rate oh interesting have you tried to use monitors or screens with let's say 120 hertz or 240 hertz over just under 30 or 60 hertz i mean not that i've noticed no no i actually had experience only about a couple of days ago and the change actually is quite dramatic. That's just on regular monitors. Mm. And you don't know, you don't know how good it is. I, I had 60 frames, I thought oh, it's good enough. 120 is beautiful. Everything just rolls so smoothly. Like, you know, when you're scrolling through the pages on the internet mm. and everything is so smooth. So imagine this wow. in a EVF without blackout. Amazing. I like the sound of that. It also will probably reduce eye fatigue when you're looking at an electronic viewfinder because that's one of the things. It's like having a, a low refresh rate viewfinder makes it very difficult to use an electronic viewfinder for long periods of time. Apparently, the Z9 is going to use the same battery as the D6. I mean, that would be great because so many people have e and 18 type batteries. There will apparently be a new type that can be charged with the camera's USB-C port and would probably be hot chargeable, meaning that you can use the camera at the same time as charging. We're hoping that that's the case. That's true. I mean, this rumor has been confirmed because there was a patent registration and product registration in Korea. Yeah. So we've got some specs that's 10.8 volts, 330 uh, mAh, and the new charge obviously will come with it as well, which probably will allow for faster charging. But the good news is you can still use your D5 and D6 batteries. Uh, I think it's going to be the same case as with Z6 and Z7, where the older batteries are not going to be last as long as the new batteries, but they still will be usable. Excellent. Uh, the sensor has a multi-leaf blade protective shutter that auto covers the sensor when switched off or changing lenses to stop dust or dirt getting onto the naked sensor. And we like that. Absolutely. So again, keep in mind that's not actually a real shutter. It's more of a protective thing to protect the sensor uh, from the dust. So obviously, if you have the 6 and the 7 already, if you remove the lens, you will see the sensor fully exposed. So it's actually nice to have something like this on the camera that is intended to be used in very harsh environments. Exactly. Yeah. Now, this is a rumor I've heard from, come from multiple sources that the Z9 will have car autofocus recognition mm. in addition to the animal and IAF that they have for people. Absolutely. Nikon is well prepared yes. for AI takeover. And yes. Cars. <laughs> yeah, recognizing cars. Absolutely. And when I say AI, I mean Transformers. Yeah, Optimus Prime. It's also going to have minus seven EV low light AF. And I heard that autofocus is going to be good as well. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So we've also seen and kind of confirmed now that there's an improved articulated screen thanks to the teaser. That's true. For some of you who are not sure what the articulated screen looks like, if you look currently at uh, Fujifilm GFX 100S, it's got basically a very similar style screen. So if you 
want to have a look at those reviews where people will flip in the screen and people give you a good idea what Z9 will have. It looks pretty much identical to this. Yeah. Then we've also got CF Express cards, dual CF Express uh, slash XQD, we're assuming, mm -hmm. um, and a new style locking flap for the memory card door. Tell me, does it make sense nowadays to buy XQD cards if you're on the market for one or do you just want to go with CF Express if your camera allows for this? The reason why I'm asking is obviously the CF Express cards have much faster writing and reading speeds compared to the XQDs. Yeah, generally speaking, you can find inexpensive CF Express cards. Anyway, I think that CF Express is going to be more widely available. So although it's a bit more expensive now, in the long run, it will work out to be cheaper. Yeah, but because the more manufacturers actually manufacture them. Mm. That means the competition is higher, therefore the price will go down. The problem with XQD cards was primarily that they're pretty much were manufactured by Sony and I think Lexa at some point. Yeah. And there was no much competition. The prices are still quite high on the XQD cards and you can get a comparable CF Express card, which is actually faster for about the same uh, money. And another confirmation that the camera is going to have a uh, GPS, GLONASS, uh, all bunch of other navigation systems mm -hmm. and, and will connect to the satellite no matter what. Mm. All right. So a part of the, ba you know, those things, we're going to have basic uh, LAN connectability, USB-C channel, Wi-Fi, built-in transmitter. The interesting one is built-in transmitter. What does that mean? Well, I assume it's a built-in transmitter, then it will allow you to transfer images to your computer or to your phone, uh, so should tethered but wirelessly, potentially. Well, okay, the Z6 already has that capability, and the Z6 too, and yes. the Z7, and the Z7 too. But I assume that probably would be a better option. You okay. know, it's probably gonna be maybe faster, maybe something else, who knows, maybe it will use a, a new protocol which allows for faster transfer rates over air. You never know. So I assume professional cameras should have the latest and greatest there. Remember, folks, back in the day, you would have to buy a WT5 or WT6 wireless transmitter, which would set you for about seven or 800 pounds yeah. just to get the functionality. So now, finally, we're starting to get those things in, yeah. in all cameras, not just expensive ones. So, which is a really nice thing to have, I would say. It is for sure. Uh, we're also looking at no second LCD screen, so different interface. Second LCD screen is something that comes from D6, yeah. D5 flagship bodies. Yeah, usually. they refer to the, the rear screens because obviously we're going to have an information screen on top as well as the regular LCD screen, So, but not yeah. the one that you would get on D6 where you would have ISO white balance and, J, um, and uh, image quality settings. So now let's go to the price. The rumored price is six to $7,000. That's something that we've predicted way before. Yes. We had a few rumors back in the day that that suggested that the price of the camera could be smaller than that, but that didn't pan out. So it seems like that the price is back to normal. Back to what we would expect yes, it to be. Absolutely. Yeah. So not a cheap camera, but camera designed for professionals and aimed for professionals. It's going to be expensive, but it will show us things to come and things to actually eventually be able to trickle down to um, a less expensive cameras. And now for our new segment. And now for our new segment, which will be connected to Z9. Every time or just this time? No, just this week. And thank you all who put those questions up in the comments below under our previous video. We gonna have... Question of the week. Whoa! <laughs> uh, this week's question comes from Nikola Saev. All right, so question of the week. What do you consider is an essential improvement that needs to trickle down from Z9 possible specs to Z6S and Z7S? So he means maybe Mark III versions of this. No, I think he mm. means Z6s and Z7s, like plural. This is the problem when we use the S's in relation to cameras is that it always makes me think, is it a third version of the camera or another version of the camera or is it just plurals? Okay, okay so basically I think... A lot of those things will trickle down into the new versions of those cameras. However, mm. there is a rumored firmware that everyone is asking about, saying, where is my firmware for Z6 and Z7 with a real-time tracking? So this is the feature number one. Mm -hmm. And it pretty much has been confirmed that it will eventually end up in Z6 and Z7 Mark II cameras. Yes. That hopefully will happen soon. We heard it's in development. When is going to come out? Well, wait for Z9 announcement and see what happens. Yeah. And I mean, in terms of what we think needs to be, because that's the thing, the Z6s and Z7s as cameras are fantastic in their own right. They don't need the specs from the Z9 necessarily, but people always want faster autofocus or more accurate autofocus. I think mm -hmm. you can't get too much of that. So that seems to be the logical one. There's not much else that they could pull from the Z9 that doesn't involve actual hardware changes. 
Okay, so yeah, I agree with you on this one. I potentially think that the rotation of the screen and the change of the menu, so the gyroscopic movements on mm. the back of the LCD, that potentially may end up in Z6 and Z7 cameras. Okay. So that's another one, which I think is possible. The screen, of course, is mm -hmm. very useful to have. That will require hardware change, I agree. So, But if uh, this one's being released, and I think it will be successful in its own right because it does look very good and very functional, I think we will definitely may see it in the future Z6 and Z7 cameras. Cool. All right, well, that's a good one. So we had a similar question, which we also covered. Now, a couple more random comments I want to read to you. Okay. Under our previous videos. And this segment we're going to call... <laughs> random question of the week. <laughs> the people say. <laughs> All right. User Fleming Law says that the N in Nikon is flipped to its side for Z shows metaphorically Nikon are taking a right step to scupper the competition in every technological development, in my humble opinion. That's a very humble opinion. <laughs> and turns to side is that that is brilliant. And I <laughs> thank you, Fleming Law, for this comment. That's so interesting. Another comment we had, and we can potentially use it as a question of the week, if you want to do it, Becky. Question of, no, DX question of the week. <laughs> Are we going to have full frame question and DX question every week? <laughs> no. Okay. I would just skip that bit. Okay, so this is another random question, but is related to the subject of DX cameras, where Robert says, honestly, I think Nikon have abandoned high-end DX bodies, mirrorless or otherwise. They just haven't shown any interest in it. Even the D500 was late to market and they haven't updated it since. I suspect they now view APS-C as the entry level point in the market. Yes and no. Yes and no, I agree. I agree with you, Robert, on the APS-C is conceived or perceived as an entry level camera sort of that's the entry level offering for the most part but it's not just entry level it's also enthusiasts prosumers people who are not necessarily looking for full frame bodies nine times out of ten when i talk to a non-photographer who's interested in getting into photography they don't care about the size of the sensor in their camera that's not what they're focused on they will ask questions like you know how many autofocus points and can it shoot in low light but the, that's not the size of the sensor is not their main uh sort of concern yeah it's not about the size it's how you use it exactly so when it comes to abandoning the high-end bodies you're quite right that the d500 was very late to market we didn't think it would come after the d300s we waited what nine years something like that for it to arrive and thought it might never happen but the d500 is a very strong camera and there's not a huge amount more that we can improve on that even the technology in the z50 and the zfc is essentially the d500 technology in a mirrorless body that's true so i think part of the problem is that we've kind of reached the pinnacle of what can be done with that size of sensor and now it's just going to be augmenting that with other bits and pieces that's true i definitely want to see a higher than 20 megapixel sensor from nikon i mean they they obviously have d24 megapixel dx sensor on cameras like d7200 mm. and d5600 so i would like for them to release a newer sensor but also i agree uh with robert that yes i think if you look at the dslrs they're not going to make another dx dslr camera not a flagship one absolutely but also even looking at the entry level ones this strong education that z30 will be the new entry level camera that should potentially replace D3500 and D5600 cameras. Now, there's also a strong indication that Z90 will be a D500 replacement. Mm -hmm. So we definitely see a fall of DSLRs and DX space, but then we see a rise of mirrorless DX cameras. Yeah. Now, how Nikon is going to approach it with their release of lenses for DX cameras, it's going to be an interesting one because obviously we have a 16 to 50 lens. We will have 18 to 40, 18 to 140 lens, which has been announced this week. So technically, we will have some releases and also Nikon has been very smart when they release their 28 and 40 mil lenses, which effectively can be used on both cameras. One particular lens that I personally miss for something like Z50 is 28 equivalent in DX space, which would be a roughly 18 millimeter focal distance. Mm. Something small pancake style for me personally would be a, a good choice, but I think we just shall wait and see what's going to happen in the space. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your comments and questions. If you would like to propose a question for next week's podcast, feel free to add it to the comments and we will pick it for question of the week. La, 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 la. <laughs> All right. I think that went well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shall we keep that one? Yeah.
Absolutely. Okay. It's a keeper. It's a keeper. And next one up. The Nico Z 40mm F2 is now shipping at Grey's Westminster and all over the world. Yes, so the first batch has left the building, literally, and uh, we're hoping for more batches very, very soon. But there are some real-world photographs taken with it on Flickr. We'll include the link for you. We are hoping to get our hands on a non-pre-production example very soon at some point absolutely i'm really glad that the van has arrived across the border uk border UK they basically. let them in and we finally well people finally have their lenses in hands i think for the price i will be getting one myself at mm. some point yes i think well let's review it and then you can see that's true that's true can. and then i'll make my decision now, also, the 28 to 300 VR has been officially discontinued in the UK, which is sad news, but not unexpected, to be completely honest. It had been a bit of a struggle to get stock for a few months. And then we were told officially last week that they are no more. Another one bites the dust. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Another one bites the dust. And another one. <laughs> and another one. Another one bites the dust. Great reference to band. Mm. It's like really going so well. Okay, there was a little bit of drama. Drama! There's a little bit of drama in Japan this week with the ZFC28 lens kit being delayed again. They did say they were going to release it on the 1st of October. They got very excited, got everyone else very excited. And now they've said that it's delayed until the 19th of November. Uh, it has been available basically everywhere else. That's true. Ha let me get this straight. So they've released the camera everywhere first yeah. with a the kit. Mm. Then they said we're going to delay till 1st of October in Japan. Yes. Then they said that we are releasing it on the 1st of October. Yes. And then a couple of days after, they say we are postponing it to the 19th of November again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. More news for Japan. Uh, Nikon have released a limited edition F2 50th anniversary strap for mm. sale. It is very Nikon. Uh, and it says the Nikon Museum with F250 th anniversary on it. Have a look at the picture. It is lovely. It's available at the Nikon Museum shop in Tokyo. So you can come there in person mm -hmm. and buy one yourself. Or if you can't come in, then you can go to Nikon Direct Japan store mm -hmm. and order one for yourself. So I assume they're going to, uh, you know, they're going to deliver all over the world. That's right. The next one up. The Nikon Report 2021 that came out in Japanese three weeks ago is now available in English. Yeah, You can download this 100 pages report of what Nikon has been up to last year and what they're thinking that will happen in the future and what they're what they doing to achieve that. Very nice report. You can read and analyze it and tell us the tidbits. I think we will <laughs> leave it for this week since this podcast has been quite wealthy with information for this week and news. But on some slow week, I think I'm going to do a dissection similar to our financial reports. Oh, joy. I am thoroughly looking forward to that. Book your holiday now. Yes. All right. It's time for commercial break. <laughs> Come on down to Grey's Westminster where you can get the finest deals on secondhand <laughs> If you want to buy a secondhand item at Grey's Westminster, you can get 10% off now. I actually can't bear it. Okay, so we are doing 10% off all secondhand cameras, lenses, speed lights, battery grips, you name it. If it's secondhand, we're doing 10% off it. For the month of October, you need to use the code OCTOBER10OFF in the checkout if you'd like to place your order. If you're one of our wonderful viewers from outside of the UK and Europe, then you can give us a call to place your order and we'll ship your order to you. Terms and conditions maximum up to £150 off and not available for finance. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, we're not doing super numbers, are we? Makes my brain hurt. Yeah, shall we leave Can it Can we do next it next week? week? Okay. Okay. All right, let's get to software updates. DxO released a pure RAW version 1.5 with the support of Nikon ZFC camera. It can't get more pure than that, Becky. No. Adobe also released a new Photoshop and Premiere Elements 2022, which is a cheaper version of full-fledged Photoshop. And... I assume you can buy it outright, so you don't need to go on subscription for that. So um, for full list of features and updates, uh, do check out the link below. And we also have great news from our friends at Analog Wonderland. Absolutely. As of the 12th of October, they have opened their brand spanking new Wonder Lab. Wonder Lab. Yeah, so the full name is Analog Wonder Lab which is a nice play on the Analog Wonderland uh, name. Now, after three years of making film photography fun 
ac and accessible and providing shooters with film and cameras and all kinds of accessories and gifts for your film lover in your life. Even if that's you, that's fine. Um, they have now finally launched a Wonder Lab. So it is a lab. And it's wonderful. It is. We will actually be visiting them next week. Oh, yes. We are going for a trip. Yep. To uh, High Wycom to go and have a little look around the new premises. So we will report back to you with our day's events after we've been. All right. I think it's going to be called, cool like, instead of Alice in Wonderland, we're going to call it Becky in the Wonder Lab. <laughs> Becky in Wonder Lab. I like that. And that's it for the news today. For We Can Read and Watch this week, we recommend you to read an article released on Nikon's website, which talks about the philosophy behind the design of Nikon's ZFC camera. It's an article where they interview four designers and how they came to conclusion that this is designed for ZFC full stop. Mm. Hmm, exciting. Speaking of ZFC, we also got a worthy contender. Amazon is selling this Junger 48 megapixel 4K autofocus digital retro camera for $119. Have a look at this, Becky. Wow. It's like the kind of things you get on CVS channels, isn't it? Time will go far. Images will last forever. <laughs> I like the lighting. I do too. Um, I would like to say apparently it shoots 4K. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the funny thing is in specification, they say tips not professional camera. Professionals are not recommended to buy. Well, thanks for being fully transparent with us there. Uh, thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please do give us a like and a subscribe if you're on YouTube, a follow and perhaps a review if you're on a podcast platform. And you can follow us too. Absolutely. I'm on Instagram. There's a social network which is called Instagram. Mm -hmm. It was down last week, but apparently it's back on. So they found that old hard drive that just plug it in. So I'm at Konstantin Kochkin and you are? Rebecca underscore Denezi. If you've got a rumor to share, do send it at media at graceofwestminster.co.uk and we're also on track for 10,000 subscribers. So hopefully we can make it this month. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do definitely hit that button and this bell thing and some other thing. And there's my telephone number there, so call me as well. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.